Blog Talk Radio. It's the Ed Show, not the Ted Show. It's the sit back, relax in your bed show. It's the Ed Show. Come on to the Ed Show. You can talk to Ed on the Ed Show. Hey everybody. Hey. Is Ed, how you doing? I'm sitting here dancing to the theme of Judge Judy. I love this goddamn show. Seven o'clock every night. Usually I forget she on when I did my show, but I had my channel on and Judge Judy. She ain't that bad looking. I mean, she's alright looking. Judge Judy, she inland. Precedent and shit. She's a she's a tough judge. She judges things like a goddamn beauty pageant. She's like, you're either this or you're that, but you can't be nothing. That's what she tells them. She says, listen, did you take the guy's money? Yeah, the guy goes, no. She goes, you're lying. Goes, yeah, you caught me. And she wins the case, man. Every I've never seen her lose a case, man. She like Perry Mason. Judge Judy. Do not lose not one case in America. She supposed to be, I seen on news the other day, this uh, Supreme Justice, 90-year-old fella, about to retire, and Judge Judy supposed to get his spot. It's between Judge Judy, Judge Joe Brown, Judge Alex, and Judge Mathis. But I think Judge Pirro should be in the running, too. She the best looking at all of them. But uh, they said Judge Judy probably going to get it. She's going to be on Supreme Court of Justice. And she will be making the rulings of the whole wide world, man. That's all she'll do. If you got a super important case, but Judge Judy will say, you know what, listen, we got to hear it at the Supreme Court. And, that, and then... They'll all get together, and they'll put it on CNN or C-SPAN, one of them shows. They'll put you on TV, and you'll tell your court case in front of these judges. And these Supreme Court judges are like the top judges. See, regular judges like a sausage and cheese pizza. But the Supreme Justice is like the pizza that got all the toppings. They's the top top judges that you can't get no topper than that. That's what happened in America. They can put anybody in jail that they want to put in jail. You know, I mean, if you're walking down the street and you walk by one of them supreme justice and fart, he can have you locked up for life. They will turn your pants Inside out. It's unbelievable. Truly unbelievable. You know, hey, what 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 else can you do about it? I don't know. This kid Kenneth Hobbecker is about to lose to Judge Judy right now because he's over here in a red shirt. And I know for a fact that only ten percent of people that wear red shirts in her courtroom come out on top. True true fact. They did a case study on it. Plus he got a gap in his tooth. If you add that to the mix, a person with a tooth gap and a red shirt only win 2.65% of the time on a Judge Judy show. <laughs> Guy ain't got much chance. He should know. Well, it's Thursday night. I got a co-host for my show. He uh, he comes on the show and he helps out and 
He does everything because people always say, Ed, what's the number to call into your show? I'm like, man, I don't know. How am I supposed to know? I don't run the show. Listen, number one nine, run the show. He'll run it into the ground. It don't even matter. He runs it. So, number one nine, you there? Yeah, I'm here with you, Ed. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's going on with you? I'm watching uh, my buddy Kid Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins close out the Igloo in style. They're whipping the Islanders. And Crosby has two goals. He's got 50 on the season because he's the best hockey kid in the world. Now, listen. Now, you keep telling me that he's, like, got the most goals and all this stuff like that. You keep telling me does my man Ovechkin got? 48. <sighs> and how many less games has Ovechkin played than Crosby? Nine. And he's only up by two, huh? Yeah. So you telling me if Ovechkin played in those other nine games, he wouldn't score two goals? Uh, you never know. You never know. Jesus Christ. Has he ever went nine games in a row without scoring two goals in a nine-game span? In his career. Well, just I don't earlier, think that's uh, ever happened. As, far, as long as I've been following his career, it's never happened. Well, at the start of March and uh, late February, he went ten games with only two goals. And he has two goals in the last one, two, three, four, five, five games. But he he went four straight with no goals. Yeah, he he's been uh he's been slumping lately. Uh, the guy, I mean, listen, you got he's the, he's the goal scoring champ, man. Not this year. You can't be yet. Yeah, yes, he is. You can't be saying, oh man, I played in a whole bunch of less gamers. No. Hey, it's it's not Crosby's fault that he can't. Uh, you know, he's not tough enough to play in all the games. You know. That's not the case, man. He got suspended. He pulled his vagina for the one week, and he had to miss like three days. Then he got suspended for being a douche for two games. And uh, his haircut, he got suspended for his haircut, another game. That's all right. Your girl Tina Fey got balls. <laughs> <laughs> but see, well, everybody tells me, man, involved. you like a girl who has balls in her pants. <laughs> that means you're a ball licker. <laughs> Tell me. Uh, no, if no, Peter Fay got naked, would you kiss on a ball? <laughs> please, yeah, it's a family show, please. I'm just asking. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Tina Fey's got a new movie coming out, the Eddie. You going to go see it? It's called Balls of Fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's called Date Night. Why don't you take your girlfriend date out night. to see Date Night? Yeah. I ain't going to do that. Date Night? Ooh, what's she, who's she going to date? A girl? No, she's married to Steve Carell in the movie, the guy from The Office. Man, he's a homo. He's a 40-year-old virgin, of course. She trying right. to turn him into a gay. <laughs> yeah, so she, says, she says, they, I heard that in the trailer of the movie, they was comparing size of the ball sex. No, see, that's she not true Yeah. No, you're making that up. She said, look at these marbles, office guy. Office guy, yeah. All right, well, that's just uh, silly. Hey, the Ed, uh, last weekend was uh, Easter, if I recall, right? Is that right? I lose track of the days. Yeah, uh-huh. Easter Bunny came, got candy. Man, it was a good time. I already ate all my candy. So the Easter Bunny ate loves of candy. It. Yeah, uh-huh. I always do. Yeah. In a basket? Got me a big... Wait, now, what do you think? You leave it in a cup? I don't know. You... you... Man, he, little... Listen, man, Easter Bunny don't come to your house. He puts a big old basket with grass, the fake grass in it, yeah. and jelly beans and, and, the, and, the, and the marshmallow bunnies, and then you get one great big chocolate solid bunny that weighs like five pounds, and it takes you like a day to eat it. You don't get like the uh, hollow chocolate bunny? You ever get those? The what? They usually have like the candy eyes, like the googly eyes on the candy. You never nothing? I don't know if I did. I ate it. All right. Yeah. So Me and the uh, baby had baskets, and when we woke up in the morning time, woke up, the baby woke me up because he's like, "Come on, man, we got our baskets." And we went in there. Sure enough, one basket said the baby, other basket said Ed. So your son left baskets for you guys. That was my son. No, he was asleep. He was asleep, man. He didn't even get in until late that night, man. He was already. He had called me before and said, make sure I'm in bed before he get home. Ah. So we were asleep, man. I, I went to bed about 9, 30, quarter to 10 that night. Did, and, your, son, uh, did your son get a basket? No, he didn't get one. I don't know why. I don't. 
Yeah, I don't weird. know. I don't know if he he don't like to celebrate stuff like Christmas time. None of his presents say from Santa Claus. Nothing. Yeah. All mine do. Hey, how, how do you feel about the uh, Cadbury eggs? The uh, did you like the Cadbury eggs? They got the goo in them, right? Yeah, the eggs with the goo in them. Yeah, yeah they're all right. Like it's like a Milky Way's inside of them. Well, I don't know if it's like a Milky Way. It's more like you know, yeah. it's with goo. Yeah. No, nah, it's a Milky Way. Well, Milky Way is like nug- uh, nougat, you know, it's like chocolate covered nougat. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Yeah, <laughs> with caramel. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, Easter treats there. The Ed. Uh, you said you like the jelly beans uh, and the peeps. Yeah, the peeps are always classic. The little bunnies are the. Yeah, the pink and they come pink and yellow. I always give the baby the pink ones. I take the yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't want to eat those pink ones. <laughs> no, I don't want that shit. <laughs> yeah. Get that out of my bucket. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I don't want that, man. I don't want. Then I got the marshmallow bunnies. Hey, did like you, chocolate did you, marshmallow. Did you take the baby to see the Easter Bunny somewhere, like at a shopping mall or something? Uh, we went, and uh, he cried. The bunny or the baby? No, the baby. Okay. Yeah, he took a picture with the Easter Bunny. You know, it was ten dollars to take one picture. Oh my goodness. I know. I didn't take it. I was like, ah, I ain't gonna go this year. Yeah, but you went. You've gone in past years to have your picture taken with Easter Bunny. Yeah, I don't sit on his lap though. I stand next to him with my arm on his shoulder. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and then I give him like peace sign. (laughs) That's good. Sometimes, because you can't put your peace sign over his head. He already got bunny ears, so it ain't funny. It's redundant. Yeah. (laughs) Can't do that. I tried that one year. And my son was like, well, what would you do that for? That's stupid. He's already got bunny ears. Why would you put bunny ears on him? Yeah, it's just I said, well, they rabbit ears. He already has rabbit ears. That's what I heard. Yeah. Well, uh, Easter's over with. Hey, what's the next big uh, holiday coming? I guess not till July 4th, huh? No, nah, man, I got Memorial Day coming, then my birthday. Mm, that's right. I forgot your birthday. When's yeah, your birthday again? June 12th, is that right? No, I'm 14. Oh, 14. I'll be 57. 50, yeah, so you're not aging backwards anymore? No, I give up on it. Yeah. Because you were down yeah. to like 54, but you don't want to go to 54. Well, I don't want to die young. Oh, that's good thinking. Yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah. But hey, the Ed, if you die young, though, uh, like Marilyn Monroe, J- uh, Jim, uh, Jimmy Dean there, the, uh, Kurt Cobain, all these people who die young, they're, they're remembered forever in, in their glorious youth. You know? Jim Zorn wasn't. Well, Jim Zorn's not dead. Thought he died. No, no. He just sure? coached the Redskins for a while. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, speaking of the Redskins, there, the Ed, uh, what about they got the uh, Donovan McNabb? What, what do you think? I think that, I mean, why would the Philadelphia Phillies do that, man? I mean, it don't even make no goddamn yeah. sense, man. Well, it's the Eagles. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They, uh, Eagles went over there and talking about, oh, Donovan, what team you want to play for? Jesus Christ, man. He, he went, you might as well trade him to the goddamn Cowboys. Hmm. Yeah, you might as well just trade him to the goddamn Cowboys. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Now, you know, do you think McNabb's better than Tony Romo? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd say so, too. Hey, but there's a d- big discussion on the uh, damnashek.com message boards the other day. People were arguing over whether or not uh, McNabb was better than Drew Bledsoe. Now, now, as soon as I heard that, I thought, oh, that's just ridiculous. Of course McNabb is better than Bledsoe. But I, I, I don't know. What I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, the more I thought about it, I'm like, I don't know. I think <laughs> Bledsoe was the better pure passer, you know, more accurate and stronger arm. Bledsoe and, just got hurt. Here's what I say, man. Here. Here's the only way that I can justify it. Here's how I say you got to rate people. I mean, because a lot of times some players play too long, and then it kind of hurts what they did. Yeah. I say you only take a player's five best years and judge them on that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. Because some people get hurt, and they can't help that they got hurt. It's just something that like, like say Terrell Davis, for instance. He got hurt real bad. Okay, but Emmett Smith, he hung around too long. Mm-hmm. Franco Harris hung around too long. Yeah, Seattle Seahawks, Franco Harris. Yeah, Billy Sims got hurt. 
Yeah, people but Campbell talking, Billy got Sims. hurt. Billy Sims was a dynamite uh, running back there, and then uh, no. Billy no, Sims was just as good as Barry Sanders, I think. You know what? I'm gonna tell you something. If Billy Sims would have been the running back for the Lions, and they drafted Barry Sanders, Billy Sims would have been ahead of Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders would have never seen the court. Mm-hmm. Well, the field, not necessarily a court, but yeah. That's what I'm saying. That, that's a good little theory. Hey. So, who would you say Bledsoe or uh, is better than McNabb then, or you think McNabb? I don't know. I got to look at their best five years, man, and see. That's how I do it. I'm gonna make my own head a Hall of Fame. Hey, that's a good idea, Ed. Why don't we do that? We'll work on that. Every sport. Uh, would you have a hockey Hall of Fame? You could put Crosby in and uh, Lemieux. There'd only be one guy in there. Yeah, Crosby, right? Oh, best. <laughs> Please, dear. You see that girl from Precious got a new commercial? No, I didn't see that. She's going to be playing a D-sized battery for Energizer. <laughs> well, that's, that's good, the Ed. Hey, the Ed, I think we have a caller on the line. And if uh, you'd like to talk to the Ed, the number is 646. 646- Seven one six. She also. She also going to be playing Shirley in the new What's Happening movie. <laughs> six four six seven one six seven five two two. The yeah, ad. It's been a while uh, since I've seen this number. Let, let, let me see who it is. I think is it our buddy uh, Steve from Alabama. Is that you? Yeah, sure is. Hey, Steve from Alabama. The ad. Hey man, I heard you a grandpa now. Yeah. You old grandfather. Wow. You old fart. <laughs> Well, the Ed, you're a grandfather, right? No, he, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's why I, I got a question for him that my age and the baby, and Ed and the baby and my grandbaby were about the same age separation there. So I'm going to need to know how to keep up with my grandbaby because, you know, I got put out real quick in the wrestling thing. So yeah, I, I know, man. You didn't do too good, man. But you, you, you're bound to win something, man. You're bound to win something. Well, I'm waiting for that 13 game to come back around so I can win it again. Yeah, I know. They all, and then somebody tried to get on there and start a new game called Six Hits. See, everybody want to try to get in games like me, man. Why everybody want to be, I'm the only goddamn Wayne Brady in this goddamn. <laughs> the only Wayne Brady. Yeah, Steve and the Ed are talking about the Ed's uh, many games he has going over at Damashek.com. Uh, they're free to play, and uh, the Ed gives away some uh, amazing prizes. I'm thinking about starting to charge and start giving away like five hundred dollars to the winner. Uh, that's silly. That'll never happen. Well, Mike Bell, I got a question for you. Sure. If you were running one of those games and you had a home run derby, would you put Jason Hayward in it? Well, listen, listen here, here, <laughs> look, look here, Grandpa. Listen to this. Listen, listen. Jason Hayward was just a thought in your middle finger. <laughs> when I made this game up over 60 days ago, I put this game up on the thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. plus, but this game only lasts like 30 or 60 days, so we got another home run derby coming. Just hold your horses. He'll be in there. You can pick him. I don't so care. Hayward will be in the second home run derby. Yeah. I didn't make this ain't a whole year's game because I want – you know, it gets boring when we play the game for the whole goddamn year. People want to play, man. I, I Like, I got – the games are only from now on. The game's gonna be like thirty to sixty days. Yeah, I like that. Man. But forget about Jason Hayward. Yeah, did, was Garrett Jones in the first time run derby game? He wasn't in that goddamn. No, yeah. even Garrett Jones' mama don't even know who he is. He, he's the new, he's the new Babe Ruth. Garrett Jones. He's a one man lumber company for the Pittsburgh Fire. Uh, uh, what do they call it? The Pittsburgh Hit Exchange now? I, I don't know, but he's very good. Three home runs already. Well, hey, man, he'll have 12 for the year. <laughs> <laughs> He's got Tuffy Rhodes. Tuffy Rhodes hit three home runs in one game at the beginning of the season. Yeah, that's right. Tuffy Rhodes. I yeah. Anyone I mean, over yeah, Japan. Tuffy Rhodes. Hey, listen, I'm telling you about Tuffy Rhodes. He's living out here in Las Vegas. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah my son used to hang out with him sometimes. Hey, didn't he go over to Japan, and he was like a big home run hitter over there too, right? Yeah, uh-huh. Didn't he challenge, like, the all-time record and, like, uh, the Japanese guys were real, real mad at him because he's going to break the he record. He got close. He got close, man. And you know what he told? He told them toughy shit. <laughs> what he said. And they got mad at him. Yeah, that's right. Now, now Steve from Alabama, are you excited that uh, Kid Crosby has two goals tonight to give him 50 on the season? Yeah, I'm glad to see him get on up there. Um, my daughter's a real big Crosby fan. Ah, yeah, but Ovechkin played in ten less games, man. Nine less games, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, no, I'm more of an old fashioned. I'd like to see um, Stamkos get it up there at 50. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that kid, he scored tonight, too. He's got 48. But uh, he, he's sneaky good, that Stamkos. Well, no, yeah, but have, good. You, uh-huh. have you seen their, them play much, Tampa Bay? Uh, not a lot, but I've seen... Listen, man, this conversation should take place on Wednesdays. <laughs> all right. Yet, all right. Well, he does the same shot on the power play, they just and they can't stop yeah. it. You know, just yeah, a think, one-timer. Okay, go ahead. What was yeah, we'll well, it'll, just be, it'll be interesting to see what the Stamkos does next year. When, now that How the hell right. does an Alabama guy call my show and talk about hockey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is kind of weird. Okay. Hey, Steve, uh, what's been going on? It's been a while since you've called the show. Anything new? Uh, well, you got the green He was yeah. locked up. He was locked up. Oh, you yeah. Yeah, I ran the scales in Mississippi one night. Oh, no. He locked me up, yeah. Strangest thing, though, uh, I was fooling around with a woman there at the truck stop, and Whoa. Man, she was just addictive, and I had to get away from her, so I broke up with her one night, and she was chasing me, and I ran the scales, and they come after me and shot my tires and Holy hell. pulled me over, and he's like, where's the fire, boy? I said, <laughs> I ain't no fire. I'm running from the plane. Well, they locked me up. And since I told them I was addicted, they put me in two. Wow. Say what? Yeah, we we lost Steve there for a minute. Steve, are you still? Oh, Steve dropped off the line. I think they caught. I think they caught yeah. up where it was chasing him. Caught him. I think they caught him again. But I didn't understand his story at all. Did you? <laughs> well, he was running from a lady apparently, and I don't know. They shot it. What a what a gay! He's running from a lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Steve from Alabama. <laughs> He he won the Eddie for uh, Listener of the Year, right, or Caller of the Year, or something. Yeah, yeah I think he did. He's a good oh. kid. Oh, well, oh he's I, a good no. grandpa. Yeah. It's oh, is he back? Hey, Steve, are you back? Yeah, I was in oh. that place with my truck that got. Oh there. yeah, the dead zone there. Yeah. Yeah. So I got locked up, and I told them I was addicted to that woman. They put me in sex addiction, and wound up with Tiger Woods and sex. Oh, addiction. that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So found out they, with the yeah, if you ever get in trouble, just say you're a sex addict, and everything is okay. Yeah, don't yeah. Don't worry about. It. But yeah, yeah, I've been a grandpa. I've been busy with that. And well, congratulations. Really well, thank you, man. Hey, what uh, The Ed, can you give uh, Steve any advice on being a grand? Because you are a grandfather, the Ed. I know you don't like to talk about it, but you're a grandfather. Listen, all you got to do is just give them toys, man. Give them toys. Well, toys and candy. Yeah. Yep. Hey, how, how old is the baby? It was born Tuesday, so a week and two days. Ah, six more weeks, you can give him hot wings. Yeah. <laughs> two more years, he'll be in the baby fight. Hey, didn't the uh, Brett Favre, didn't he become yeah. the uh, grandfather? Yeah. Yep. That'd be something, Brett Favre, grandfather and quarterback in the fight. Hey, yeah, speaking of candy, them Cadbury eggs, yeah. the inside of it's more what comes out of Tennessee's balls. See, I knew that was coming. I could see that coming a mile <laughs> yeah. away. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't like it one bit. Yeah. It'd be a shame if Steve falls off the line again. You know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you can put me on hold. Good to talk to y'all again. I've been here. Right, right. Good hearing from you, buddy. All right, thanks. See you. All right, man. Be good, man. Get, hey, man. Get them. Hey, get a girl at the truck stop for me, man. Knock her up. Okay. <laughs> All right, there you go, Steve from Alabama, uh, one of her favorites. So how about that, Ed? Uh, Steve from Alabama, he's a grandfather. Man, this fantasy baseball league, I'm winning 15-3-2 to to two yeah. over the Rick Sweet Stash Rides. Let's talk about this fantasy baseball league, because you and I, we worked out a trade earlier today. I was going to trade you Milton Bradley, because you needed a left fielder, and you were going to trade me Johnny Peralta, because I needed a uh, third baseman. And uh, and then just right before the show, you, you rejected the trade offer. What gives? Well, I, I started looking, man. I don't need Milton Bradley. Really? Yeah, because I got Brad Hopp in right field, and I got Juan Pierre in left field. Juan and Pierre, then if I give very you, good. He's hitting three thirty three, and he's got a oh, sneaky. What is, what is he, one for three? Is he's on first one? base. He's on first base right now in the, in the bottom of the seventh. So he's already there. Ridiculous. Listen, now, if I give you Johnny Peralta, that means when... Eva Longoria don't play. I gotta put nobody at third base. Unless let me see if Alex Gonzalez counts as a third baseman. He should. Well, no, what are you he gonna? Should. 
What are you going to do on the nights when uh, Juan Pierre doesn't play? Your whole team's going to fall apart. He plays every night. Huh? Did you ever think he that? plays every night. He no. plays every night. Who does he even play for? I didn't even know Juan Pierre was still in the league. Is he in Colorado? Where is he? Uh, uh, White Sox. No, he's not the White Sox, is he? Yes, he is. You know, he's playing. That's he's on first base right now. What's Juan Pierre doing in Chicago? He's playing ball, man. Let me look at my team. He's DHing for the White Sox tonight? Is he really? Yeah. Well, that's kind of weird that he's a DH. Dude, but, uh, oh. I got Nick Punto. I mean, I should have played him last night. He got a goddamn triple. He stole a base and scored a run. He went two for four. Yeah. Man. I don't know. Are we considered a super deep league? Yeah, we're we're considered deeper than deep. I know, because that always throws me off. And they say, consider this guy for AL only leagues. And I'm like, well, we're not AL only. We're AL and NL. Yeah. We're, we're a mixed league, but we're, we're ridiculously deep. 30 teams. Usually a deep league, they consider like 15 teams, 12 to 15. But, uh, you know, 30, that's, that's ridiculous. So. I know. How are we going to do this when it comes football time? Yeah, the Ed wants to have a 32-team fantasy football league. That'll be nice. But the quarterback touchdown passes only be worth three. And here's what I think we can do, the Ed, because we were wondering, we were worried about uh, the first round of the draft. Pretty much everybody's probably going to take quarterbacks, you know. But what we can do is, uh, you can only have one quarterback on your team, and when you draft that quarterback, you automatically get his backups. You know what I mean? So, like, if you draft Peyton Manning, you have Indianapolis's quarterback. Oh, so, you like that idea? It's, otherwise, it's going to be tough because teams could just say, uh, you know, if you don't draft a quarterback in the first round, teams could grab one in the second and then screw a team who wouldn't even have a quarterback. You know. So I think you you should only get one quarterback. Yeah, but and we got to do like I said too, man, about how the yardage, like running backs yardage, you got to be worth like two points a yard, and receivers two points a yard. Well, I don't so know. So it equals quarterbacks. So quarterbacks don't dominate the league. Yeah, we'll we'll figure out a scoring system where the quarterbacks not as. Uh, I already made it. Uh, well, I don't. Yeah, but I don't know if we trust your scoring systems. They're kind of silly sometimes, but you know. But uh, we'll work it out. Well. I don't know. But it's going to be know. exciting. A 32-team fantasy football league. That's never been done, I don't think, right? I don't know. If we did a 64-team league, that'd be something. Yeah, let's do that. We like the NCAA tournament. Just add them all. Yeah, you can either have a quarterback or three kickers. How about that? That'd be something. <laughs> I'd take three kickers over a quarterback any day. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, I was thinking about this the other day, man, about, you know, they always talking about all oh, the NFL needs to be fixed and all this. Well, I told you about my theory on, on the point system for the kicking, right? Well, yeah, the, the farther you the are, yeah, the closer you are, the more points it's worth. Yeah. That's a because you idea. drove down farther. That's now, right. I tried to explain that to some people, and they said, no, no, you should get points the farther away you are. No. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I said, that's because. You don't want that because that's how Tom Brady got them Super Bowls because Vinatieri had to bail him out. If you do it that way, you're rewarding the kicker and not the team. But if you give exactly. uh, if you give them three points for a 20-yard uh, field goal, that's rewarding the team for driving the field. You know exactly. But or, I, th- I think that one rule change alone, the Ed, would revolutionize football and make it much more inter- interesting and entertaining to me. Yeah. They'd have to score a touchdown. Yep. Because now if you're down yep. by three, you you got to drive that ball deep. You know, you can't be getting to the 35 and taking a knee, you know. I need to call the committee. Yeah, I think you do. I don't know what committee, but you need to call them immediately. What about this one? How about they take the arena football goalposts and put it in the NFL? With a net? Does, does there have to be a net? No, 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 no. You don't have to have a net. No, no, no. Just how Just skinny it is. You see it. Yeah. yeah, the width. It's only about the size of my wiener. Long ways. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's that small, but uh, yeah. Not that big. Yeah, See, that's a good idea too, because uh, field goals are just too easy, right, Dad? They're just too easy. Yeah. Kickers because people these now. these kickers are yeah they're too good now because they specialized in it. Yep. You know these guys know how to play soccer and all this other stuff and 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 you know they learn how to do it. Who who's the best kicker you ever, you've ever seen, Dad? In all your years of watching football. Hmm, man. 
I don't know, man. I mean, just somebody who, if I had to pick a kicker and, and, and say, okay, I want this guy to kick it right now and not miss it, I'd take Mark Mosley maybe, man. Mark Mosley, yeah. He, tell, tell the trivia about Mark Mosley that people always forget about. He was MVP of the league. That's right, MVP, a kicker, one uh, league MVP. Yeah. Apparently and he, I mean, he wore some uh, big shoe or something or he had a lot of socks. And his kicking foot was, like, real heavy compared to his other foot, you know? It might have been. I mean, he, yeah. and see now, doesn't that, it would not be considered, like, corking your back? Yeah, it should be. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of weird kind of rules, man, that, that gets made up. You know, the only thing that's never gotten better in football is the punchers. Don't they always average about 40 yards a kick? Yeah, pretty <laughs> that's much. It. Yeah. Everybody, I mean, you know, they might get 42, 43, 44. The only time they get, they might boom one, but I don't know. Well, and I would think, think uh-huh. Go ahead. I would think more punters would miss it when they tried to kick it. Well, remember, what was that, the, uh, was that the Bears and the Giants, that one playoff game in 85, uh, when the uh, kicker, the punter, just missed it because the wind blew it away? Remember that one? Uh-uh. Was that Sean Landetta? It may have been. Yeah, I can't remember who exactly it was, but uh, the Bears scored a touchdown there, and uh, you know, uh, it, was a, it was a playoff game, I believe. Yeah, but uh, the, the the big advancement, or not an advancement? Well, I guess you could say an advancement would be that, that a lot of kickers drop it point down now. Punters, you know, they drop it with the point down. That's a little bizarre. But how come no one does the old uh, coffin corner kick anymore? The Ed, you know? I don't know. If you watch punters now, they kick it right in the middle of the field and then just hope their uh, yeah. their uh, coverage downs it. You know. I know, I, and you know what I would do, man. I would, if I was a head coach in the NFL, I would onside kick every time. So would I, the Ed. Yeah, I, I don't know why these uh, football coaches are so yellow. Like, like a team, like uh, pick a lousy team. Who was the, the Rams? The Rams. You knew they're they're going to lose every game. Why not just onside kick every time, and then every time you get a touchdown, go for two every time, right? Exactly. Yeah. I would. Fun. I mean. You game, you got to make it entertaining. You got to make people want to come to your games. If people go, man, I don't know what the heck these guys going to do. These guys might do a triple reverse. Yeah, like in baseball too. The like the Pirates. Uh, you know, seventeen years in a row they've been a losing team or sixteen, whatever it is. You know they're going to stink this year. So one night I would just have everybody on my team bunt. You know, if I was the manager, or, or have them all. You know, just do crazy stuff. What else could they do? I'd, to make it I'd have them all hit a home run. <laughs> well, yeah, that's another idea, but and, uh, just make it fun, you know? That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah. Make it fun. Play with uh, two outfielders and uh, five infielders. Just mix it up. Do whatever you want to do, you know? Yeah, figure something crazy out, man. Or pitch underhand. Yeah. Or play is, there a rule that says, uh-huh. is there a rule that says you cannot pitch underhand? I don't think. Yeah, that'd be like good. Just throw it, like, throw it super slow. If you throw it super slow, those do, it's hard for them to hit home runs. I bet it would be, yeah. Like the old Ephus pitch. Remember the old Ephus pitch? Yeah, uh-huh. Just get over there and just toss it. Like 25 mile an hour. Or what, or what about if you have like a, uh, say you have a, a, a left-handed hitter up at the plate, get your third baseman and play him about five feet from the batter, like inside the line, and just have him yell at him, you know, the whole time. And just like... Yeah, they don't ever do that. They never go like, hey, better, 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 hey, better, better, swing. But you just make sure you pitch him inside so he can't, you know, hit one the other way. But, yeah, you get real real uptight on him. And you just hey, you stink, you know, just heckle him and stuff. It would be great. Yeah, I don't know about that one. That's kind yeah. of Yeah. Oh, I'm just spitballing. Scary. You know, just trying to, yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, I would. That's what we're trying to say. Just make it fun. And, like, why these guys don't steal no more? Yeah. Yeah, like, Everybody... like another time, some night I'd say, hey, it's, it's uh, no stopping on the bases night. And whoever, you, as soon as you hit the ball, you just got to keep running until they tag you out of your score, you know? Man, you get tagged out a lot, man. You wouldn't score that much. Yeah, but who cares, you know? Well, then you'd be Z- games. Who cares? Yeah, I know, I know. Or I, if I was a manager, I'd say, you know, if if we was out of it, like say if we was the Pirates, mm-hmm. I would call a kid down on the field and let him be manager for tonight. Yeah, like Gary Coleman and uh, the kid from left field. Yeah, he get to make the lineup. Everything. He tells who's pitching. If he wanted Willie Stargell to pitch, oh, Willie, you're pitching tonight. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. Willie's like, man, I play first base. He's like, yeah. oh, this kid say you pitching. Yeah, well, or just have a raffle before the game, like pick nine people out of a hat, and, hey, you're starting nine tonight, 
You know, you bought a ticket, you get to play, too. Come on. Come on down. You're a shortstop tonight. You know, that'd be great. Yeah. Pinch hitter. What's the worst that happens? You lose? Oh, no. The Pirates are going to lose 100 games anyway this year. Who cares? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know yet. We could fix a lot of problems in sports, me and you. I know it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm like a goddamn handyman. There is no off position on your genius switch. No. I got to go to the eye doctor here in a couple of days. Yeah, I, uh, I was supposed to go. I was supposed to go yesterday, but I got to go next Wednesday at eye doctor. What kind of is this a legit eye doctor? It's not like that guy who was going to make your uh, your linus longer, right? No, nah, this guy here, man. I have seen a thing for him. Cost twenty five hundred dollars. I won't have to wear no glasses and no nothing, and he gonna he let you pick. You can either now see in HD or in three D. And he'll well, fix your eyes to do it. You won't even need the 3D glasses. And he'll put well, your answer. eyes to see in 3D. See, right, right away. I, uh, is this guy well, down at I mean, Swap Meet? Is that where you found this guy? The Swap Meet or is he? No, no. He down around the, I mean, he he not too far from there, but he got a shop down there. Okay, because uh, i got to tell you, buddy, I, I think this is another scam. I don't know. It's only $2,500. Well, he said it'd take about an hour to do it. Take about an hour to do it. Because I hate to break it to you, but you already see in 3D. No, I don't. I don't even have the glass. I mean, you know what? You're right. You're right, because I still got them Friday the 13th glasses that I'd get a long, long time ago, but one eye is out, so only do I only see 3D in the one eye. The red part one, red one fell out, the green one's still there. No, I see it. So I right see in 3D, but only in that eye. Now, this guy, he will, no, 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 listen, listen, no, you don't even know what I'm saying. This guy going to put the 3D in your eyes. So uh -huh. things are going to look like in 3D, like they're coming at you. But that's the way things always are. You, no, you always not for me. 3D. No, I, only if I, yeah, when I had them glasses on a long time ago, but now, I mean, tell you, them glasses broke. But this guy, you don't even need the glasses. And then the HD, I mean, have you ever seen HD on television? Yeah. He's going to make me see the world just how like I see the TV. Huh. In HD. That's something. Yeah. So, I mean, it ain't going to be no problem. I mean, I think I might pick HD over 3D because 3D sometimes scare me, man. Yeah. Hey, see if you can oh. see in 1D. I don't even know. I, I, I don't know if he could, and he might be able to do it. Yeah. I think that's, you know, he can, He but he did have a thing, because I saw his pamphlet. He can make oh, it well, see in black and white. Oh, there you go. And, and he said that, but he said that's excellent for older people. Huh. You know, who used to watch, like, Andy Griffith and stuff like that? They want to go back to the old days. He make you see in black and white. I actually wouldn't mind that, you know, seeing in black and white. One more time. Ah, that's great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're quite the whistler, the Ed. Yeah. Yeah. When I see a pretty girl, I go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so when you feel pretty good, you just bust out the whistle there. Yeah. 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 So are you are going. <laughs> You gonna trade me Johnny Peralta now? Is that no? No, nah, man, I ain't gonna do that trade because I need him. Yeah, you're a punk. Well, this this league's very hard, and plus I'm fifteen and two right now. Oh yeah, through three days of the week one, yeah. you're you're a dominant juggernaut in this league. That's what somebody wrote. The Ed always wins. Oh, Ed always wins. He's always the best. Yeah, well, it wasn't me. I'm in the I'm in I'm in the finals in my uh, NBA 
2010 Fantasy Basketball League. Because you cheated in that league, too. No, I didn't. Oh. I didn't cheat in nothing. Didn't you trade Gilbert Arenas for Chris Bosh after Arenas had already been suspended for the year? Well, the guy that I traded him to, Little Jay, thought that he might be coming back. No, he didn't. He just did that to have, so you could have a good player. You guys cocked up, you know, cooked up some uh, ridiculous little scheme. And, yeah. Well, I mean, why are you bringing up old stuff anyway? Old stuff? It's it's constant stuff with you. You're always pulling some shenanigans. I'm not going to talk for a minute. But you can't do it in this baseball league because I'm the commissioner, and any any deal you make has to be approved by me. That's right. Now what's up? I still got 30 more seconds. I'm not going to yep. talk. You know you're scared. Just trade me Johnny Peralta and I'll forgive it. But, but really, that's how desperate this league is. Like, uh, Johnny Peralta is a prized possession, you know? <laughs> like in a normal fantasy baseball league, who cares about Johnny Peralta? But I'm no, not talking it, for 15 it, more seconds. In, in this league, it's like, wow, if I, can land, if I can only land Johnny Peralta, my team will be good. Yeah. The, 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 the good thing about the story team league, though, is the other yet is I'm yeah, in another I league. Talk. I didn't yeah. talk for a whole minute. <laughs> yeah, it was something. But I'm in another league with only like ten or twelve teams, and then I go over there and I look at the waiver wire, and it's like you know, there's you there's guys are just everywhere. But in our league, there's no one on the waiver wire, like literally nobody. Can't I know, and I can't even I can't even look at that god dang thing because I can't figure it out. I'm like, ah, forget it, man. Yeah, CBS Sportsline sucks, doesn't it, CBS? I liked it, but I don't like it now. Yeah, it's terrible. Judge Judy's on for another god dang episode. Did she win? Man, she don't ever lose, man. She's like the god dang champion. Yeah, like, speaking of champions, super baby fight champion, the baby, I hear you, uh, you want to announce a contest involving the baby. Yeah. Well, you know, next school year, the baby going to start kindergarten. Yeah, he's going to be kindergarten. Yeah. Now, we got to figure out a name for this baby because right now, I mean, I, I'll still call him the baby. It don't matter. But I think for school-wise, he can't be called the baby. Yeah, they, like for the official records and stuff, they, they usually like to have a name. Because yeah. I got a birth certificate to swap me, and it said Emily Rodriguez. Yeah, and how much, but, didn't you pay like 200 bucks for it or something like that? You yeah, got it off uh -huh. guy? Yeah. yeah, the Mexico guy, give it to me. A couple hundred dollars. Now, I crossed out Rodriguez and put Miller, so it say Emily Miller, but Emily ain't no boy name. Yeah, then you found out that the baby was actually a boy, so that didn't work. Yeah, so what I got to figure out, I mean, I could just call him Little Ed. Yeah, Ed Jr., um... I don't know. What other what other names could we go with? How about uh, how about Sidney Crosby Miller? How about that? No. How about Sugar Ray Miller? Hey, that's not bad. Or Magic Miller. How, how about you name him in honor of your buddy Dave Damashek? Call him uh, uh, Dave Miller. How about that? Uh. -uh. Why not? Now those guys on that Adam Carolla message board hate me, man. I don't care. They lie. Yeah, well, it's all right. I hate him. What about Peyton Miller? Hey. Peyton Manning Miller. Peyton Manning Miller. Rex Grossman Miller. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Hey, is it Re who's Rex Grossman? Uh, is he the backup now for McNabb? Is that right? Yeah, he's on the Redskins. So he'll be yeah. backing up Donovan McNabb right now. Well, I mean, there, but it, actually it could be a battle. Well, I don't know. I don't know. know. They didn't trade McNabb so they could give the job to Grossman, you know. They, they McNabb's their starter. And they signed Grossman for like eight million dollars a year. I I think you're wrong on that. I don't think that's true. I don't know. I think, I think Rex Grossman had to pay them eight or nine million dollars a year just to, to let them play. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but hey, McNabb, he always gets hurt, you know. So maybe uh, you'll get to see your boy Rex play this year. Yeah, playoff Super Bowl. The Rex Grossman Miller, that's a contender. That really is. So, the end, are you going to, you're going to have a contest where people can name the baby? Is that right? Yep. Now, should they? Uh, should we start a little thread over at Damashek.com where they can submit their entries maybe? Maybe that's the best way to do it? Yeah, go ahead. I don't care. All right. Put it on there and we'll see who got the best name for a baby. Hey, what about uh, Ricky Henderson Miller? 
I thought about that. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. Yep. Yep, I'm thinking about Ricky Henderson Miller. Wouldn't be a bad name. Wouldn't be a bad name at all. Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, so we'll start a thread there over there at uh, damagecheck.com. Name that baby contest. And what's, uh, how long are you going to keep it open? Until next week or what? I don't know. We'll just look at it and see whoever puts anything in. Maybe somebody might not even, they, we might not even get no submission. Okay, so you'll just check the thread, and if you see something you like, bang, they're the winner. Yep. And what do they get if they win? Man, why I always got to give away prizes, man? Well, it's a contest. You said it's like a contest. No one wants to give me a prize. Well, you don't actually ever win anything either. But if it's a contest and someone wins, they, they need a prize. I'm the two-time gambling champion of the world. But you, you had to cheat to I, do it. I got to say congratulations to Don O'Trepley for winning. Oh, no, he beat uh, my the buddy The gambling Lance. championship. Yeah. Oh, man, that kid came in third. Lonely in the ring came in third. He was a paper oh. champ, man. The kid was a paper champ. <laughs> and he, was, champ. he almost yeah. won it back to back. Almost don't care. I'm the only one that's been a two-time champ. When you've you been a two-time you champ. You cheated. You had to cheat no, I to do it. I did not cheat. I don't know. I seem to recall. Tired you of these the people rules. saying. Tired of people saying that I'm cheating and carrying on and all this stuff like that. Well, here's an easy solution. Don't cheat and carry on and then no one will say it. I never did. All right, we'll see about that. Hey, the end, I think someone uh, wants to talk to you on the on the phone line there. You want to talk to him? Who? Uh, caller in the five zero five area code. Are you there? Hey, I'm here. It's uh, Face Ventura. Hey, I thought it was our buddy Face Ventura. Hey, what's your name is caller? <laughs> Face Ventura. Ed. Hey, Face Ventura. What are you doing? Not much, man. I'm uh, watching the Frozen Four, uh, Boston College and uh, Miami. Yeah, college hockey. The Eddie excited. The Frozen Four. Yeah. Uh, Franklin always liked that, man. Franklin will be back in town April 30th for a week. Oh, He's gonna good. stay with me. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, hey, listen, but, man. Uh, Face Ventura never wins none of my games, man. He's been in 64 games and lost in every one of them. Wow. <laughs> Yep. He uh, sucks. I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm not too good in it, especially the gambling one. Well, the gambling one, I only. I try to stick to. The funny thing is, like the gambling, I try to avoid the basketball because I don't know anything about it or could care less. Oh, uh, don't look like you know shit about hockey either. <laughs> well, I know. Well, I, that's the thing is, I do bad in the hockey, but I think I'm actually done pretty well in the basketball. Like I think I, I probably. I don't know. Like. Like if I were to guess, I'd probably have like twenty and four in like basketball and all the total basketball I've done, which I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know man. I don't know. I always see every yeah. time I get on the bottom of the list and say Well, well, to be fair to me, that you weren't doing too uh, all that hot this uh, this gambling competition either. Yeah, you but know. I'm the two, but, I, but I'm a two-time champion. I've won it twice, so I. I I can come, I can have a bad time every once. I'm fifteen, two and three in the baseball now, but I can be a bad. I can have a bad time sometimes. But but you're consistently bad, man. Uh, okay, yeah, fair enough. You should be called. <laughs> you should be called Bad Ventura. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that one, but uh, hey, Ed, did you watch that um that Roy Jones and that Bernard Hopkins fight? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that yeah, I watched it. Was that not one of the worst fights you've ever seen in your life? Because that was that's up there for me. That's got to be like top three. Oh no, I've seen way worse than that, man. I don't know. I've seen some bad fights, but as far as like big name, you know, big name guys, I think that's that's definitely up there. It was awful. I know, and I'm going to the Holyfield fight this weekend. That's going to be bad too. Holyfield and Bosa. Why are you going to see that? <laughs> Did you lose a bet? No, I got I got tickets. It was two hundred dollars a piece. Oh my. See Francois Bosa? He fighting Evander Holyfield. Jesus. That guy sucks. The last time I saw him fight, I remember, was against uh, Mike Tyson, and Mike Tyson destroyed him. Who? Bosa. Francois Bosa. That was a long time ago, though. That was, that was on the undercard, or not the under, was that? The, wasn't that uh, Tito and uh, Oscar De La Hoya? No, Bosa never won. I remember that one. 
Yeah, Mike Tyson tried to break both his arms. Remember that? He had he got yeah. a little arm bar thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. But Tyson knocked him out. Yeah. Yeah, Tyson knocked him pretty clean. I was trying to think. I, I, I thought maybe that was the fight when he had just gotten out of jail, but I think that was against Peter McNeely. No, that was Peter McNeely, man. I was a devil. Yeah. Uh, Mike Tyson, listen, what? I'm telling you. See, that's what I'm saying, too, number one night, about, like, how you judge people. Mike Tyson is the, in the top three heavyweights of all time. But once he got to, you know, he just stuck around too long and had a lot of bad advice and his mind was not right. When his mind was correct and his people was alive, like Customato and, and Jim Jacobs and all those guys like that, they had Mike under control. But once Don King got a hold of him and showed him the money and the pussy, yep. it was over. And Mike, yep. couldn't, Mike couldn't handle that Robin Gibbons, such a manipulating woman, <laughs> she, she tore his mind up, man. She giving him drugs and stuff, doing all kind of stuff to make him go crazy. Her Robin Gibbons and her mom are some evil ladies, man. I'm telling you, my other friend. Remember I told you I had a friend who, who was married to Muhammad Ali's daughter? Yes. Okay. Now, he used to date Robin Givens before Michael Jordan and Eddie Murphy did. See, oh, Robin Givens has been around, yeah. I didn't know and, she was around with all those guys. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, she dated Michael Jordan for a long time, and she dated Eddie Murphy for a long time. And, uh, but, but my buddy, he was seeing her because at that particular time, he was like one, a, a good cruiserweight fighter, and she thought he was going to be a champion. Well, she was a gold digger. He didn't have no money, but she didn't know it. But when she found out he didn't have no money, he was out the door. Huh. But he, but he got to get in her pants, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Robin Gibbons, she was foxy, right? Yeah, he got in her pants. So who would you, like, I had a qu another question. I think you probably have answered this before, but, like, you know, you put Tyson in the top three heavyweights. Who is your number one? Would you say Tyson? No, nah, Joe Lewis, number one of all time. Yeah, Joe Lewis. Great guy. Yeah, yeah, see, I, would, I, I, see, I would put Tyson, like, top number one just in my lifetime. Yeah, because well, I, 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 yeah. yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't really know too much about the Joe Lewis, but I think, like, Tyson was, like, that was the only time I was, when he was fighting, that was the only time I was ever watching heavyweight boxing. Like, I can't stand to watch yeah. it now. It's just. Well, I'm going to tell you something. In the next five years, UFC will be done. Over. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like the, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of the UFC. I like the back in, like, when it first started out, when the, there was, like, no weight class, and they used to fight yeah. like three or four times in one well, night. Like, that was awesome. But granted, like, they couldn't have ever kept going like that, but that was the only time I ever enjoyed watching it. Other than that, it's been pretty yeah, I'll, crappy. Fan. I'll go the other way, the Ed. In five years, boxing will be over. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you why, because the Fertitta brothers and Dana White and those guys are about to sell off the UFC in the next five years. Oh, you know some inside info of the end? I've already told you. They've already sold off 10% to the Chinese people. And the Fertitta brothers, they own all these hotels. They own 20 hotels in Las Vegas. They're selling 14 of them. Huh. They are selling off their empire and cashing out. They, they know something we don't, the end? They're, they, they're, they're, they're just... Why? They're they, don't, they don't want... Oh. No, they don't want to work no more, man. It's over, man. They got... They got almost a billion dollars. Yeah. Hey, the Ed, uh, who's like uh, the most underrated heavyweight champion? The most underrated heavyweight champion of all time? Or, or just a guy who doesn't get enough credit? Because I would, uh, I have a nomination, but uh, let's see who you think. Man, Larry Holmes, maybe. That's right. That's what I was going to say, Larry Holmes. He gets no credit, but he was a dominant heavyweight champion. He fought, he fought a bunch of bugs, but, but Larry Holmes did lose in Pittsburgh one night to a kid named Ronaldo Snipes on ABC, and they did not give Ronaldo Snipes the victory, and he won every goddamn round. Yeah. Uh, yeah what was, was the last time Larry Holmes fought? Didn't he fight, like, uh, George Foreman, like, in a yeah. combat retirement match a long time ago? Yeah, they had yeah. the geezers and Caesars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, who was the guy he, uh, remember when Larry Holmes ran up the, the back of that car and jumped off and kicked some dude? Who, do you remember that yet? Yeah, I can't remember who that was. Uh, yeah, I can't I remember who it was either, but that was, that was very good. Yeah, I love hey, Ed, what, did you, what did you think of, the Mike, of uh, Michael Moore? Michael Moore was all right, but he was never, he was never hard, tough-minded. No. Nah. 
He, he was tough. He was a tough matchup though, because he's a lefty. He was a left-handed champion. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I liked him. I remember watching when he fought. Uh, the last fight of his I remember seeing, I think, was against Holyfield. Yeah. What Those else? guys, man. What happens is, see, these guys get this money, and it's over. Like Buster Douglas. Once Buster Douglas beat Tyson, it was over, because Buster got the money, and got the fame, and he wouldn't stop eating. He didn't train for the Holyfield fight. And plus, Buster Douglas, when he beat Mike Tyson, it was a perfect storm. Yep. Because Tyson had Robin Gibbons and all this bull crap going on, and he, that's when he started doing some cocaine and stuff like that. He was getting high a lot. He had all this money and everything, and Don King really didn't care. Yep. But Buster Douglas, his mom had just died. When your mother dies... You get the more adrenaline going. Yeah, You'll be able to do all kinds of things that you will never be able to do. Okay. And he unbelievably beat Mike. And Mike had even knocked him down again. Mike knocked him down. The count was super slow. Yeah, it was. But, yeah. but I mean, hey, that's what happens. That's why you never, 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 never leave America to fight an important fight. Uh, agreed. Yeah, you never do it. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah remember... Uh, but you're talking about the boxers who get the fame and stuff, and then they quit. Remember Marvin, Marvin Hagler? He said it's tough to get up uh, and, and run in the morning when you're sleeping in silk sheets. You know? That's it. You know what? And that's exactly right. When you're sleeping on a goddamn cardboard box and some goddamn snow cones, <laughs> that's <laughs> tough. But once you get the money and you got four women in your bed yeah. and you got people bringing you everything, you ever see the movie called The Great White Hype? Uh, yeah, a long time ago, yeah, but a white guy. But Damon Williams was the big, fat, heavyweight champ, just even though they was basing that on Mike Tyson. Yeah. Uh-oh, sound like the right. baby might be at the door. Here comes the baby. Sound like the baby might be at, uh, he nigga knocking. Ah, I caught you, I caught you. What do you want, little baby? Huh? I caught you, you little mother sucker. <laughs> I'm not a stupid idiot. Hey, listen, I got a thing, too, I decided. All my friends, you know, I like Hulk Hogan had the Hulkamaniacs. Yes. Yeah. And the in the Ultimate Warrior had the Little Warriors. Uh huh. All my Ed people are gonna be called the idiots. The idiots. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. I don't know, uh, I don't know if I want to be okay. called an idiot, but all right. I don't, just I just wanted to, like you know just for the record, my favorite was always Jericho Holic, but. Uh, I don't like him. He wasn't a real wrestler. You don't like being called an idiot? That's a, I'm sure everyone will enjoy it. Face, how do you feel about being an idiot? Uh, I'm not a big fan of it, but uh, I mean, if it's, yeah. if it's in support of the ad, I guess I, I can deal with it. Oh, yeah. When the little idiots come around and they know. That, hey, little baby, why would you just throw them keys? Hey, give me my car keys, you dirty motherfucker. <laughs> you know, the ad, I hate to interrupt. <laughs> Just touching family moment. But, uh, Pace, thanks for calling, buddy. But we have like a minute left in the show, so we got to be going. But, uh, All right. Uh, well, there was one more thing. Uh, the, the Ed's son, uh, the Street Dreamer Miller, was telling me that I guess the, the Dave left him a special message on the board, so you might want to check that out. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Ed. We'll go check out what the Dave said to you. That would be good. Who did? Uh, the Dave. He left you a message on the message board. So. No, he didn't. We'll have to go check that out. Uh, he All did. right, uh, Pace Ventura. Thanks, buddy. All right. Uh, thanks for taking my call. There he goes, face and turn. Uh, all right, Dad, we only got a couple seconds here left. Uh, is there anything you'd like to tell the idiots? Because, you know, Hulk Hogan used to say what he used to tell the people. Say your prayers, eat your vitamins, drink your milk. Or something. Uh, yeah, where did the day write something at? I don't see it. Uh, well, we'll find it later. But don't you want to tell your idiots, like, some advice, like say your prayers or something? Or? Yeah, don't let them talk bad about you. That's it? Yeah. You tell everybody that all the time. I'm trying to find this thing with the day wrote. The day didn't write me nothing. All right. Well, we'll find it. Don't worry. Well, I gotta find it now. Well, you know, we gotta like finish the show. We got like thirty seconds. I mean. All right. Well, don't let him talk bad about you. Now it's time to say goodbye to Ed and all his friends. They would like to thank you, folks, for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to listen to my show. So get yourself a couple paychecks and go and buy a hoe. Y'all come back now. See ya.